we are going to discuss more about the energy part, which is the power. And uh, there are two famous quotes. One is from Sam Altman, CEO of NAI. There's a lot of parts uh, hard in AI, but energy is the hardest, right? And Mark Zuckerberg said, we we'll probably uh, build out the bigger cluster than we currently have if we could get the energy to do it. So energy is really critical. And um, Solidime focused on the energy consumption part as well. So to dig deeper into the energy, um, we got some white paper. One was uh, from Meta, white paper, Meta and um, Stanford and they were working on the Meta AI recommendation engine. So they use HDD in their data pipeline and they figured out that during the data preparation and training, 35% of the total available power was consumed by the HDDs only. And similar white paper was uh, published from Microsoft Azure for their cloud service with uh, Carnegie Mellon University. And they found that 33% of the operational energy was consumed by the drives only. So they figure out like the most direct way to reduce the storage energy consumption is fewer, denser storage devices. So it's already discussed a little bit about the um, edge computing and network attached storage requirement. I'm just going to go over uh, on the use cases that we collected, depending on the size of the network attached storage per GPU rack. So there are uh, multiple use cases. So nowadays data is growing crazy and um, we have multimodality of data like text, audio, video, different kind of data. And depending on the, that, the data size can vary a lot. For example, one page of uh, text can generate like few kilobytes of data, but one minute of uh, video, high resolution video can generate 100 to 200 megabyte of data. So based on that, we found some use cases. For example, hyperscalar LLM consumes 1.3 petabyte of uh, network attached storage per GPU rack. DDN AI uh, reference architecture requires two petabyte NAS. Um, large video model LVM, hyperscale LVM uh, requires 16 petabyte of NAS uh, attached to GPU rack. And then we have Oracle reference architecture, which requires 32 petabyte of their NAS. <laughs> and NetApp requires 1.5 to 30 petabyte NAS. So, the requirement for the NAS is growing, and there are major reason um, because of the synthetic data. By 2030, the analysts predict that synthetic data size will be much bigger than the real data. And then uh, data repatriation, so lots of regulation, security, um, all those cases, um, the enterprise are, uh, bringing all those data to their own premises. And that's why the network attached storage is increasing. We have built a model to see the energy impact for GPU rack and network attached storage. And in our model, we assumed the 16 petabyte NAS size. And uh, this is a tier two Greenfield uh, 50 megawatt data center example. 50 megawatt is uh, far uh, away from the truth right now, but in future there, that might be possible. So when we look at it, we have uh, NVIDIA a DGX H100 rack, and then we have two use cases. One is TLC as a cache plus HDD as object storage here, or all QLC. And we figured out that a DGX H100 rack, which has like four GPU server, consumes around 45 kilowatt. And the TLC plus all HDD JBuff consumes 32 kilowatt power. And all QLC to offer the same performance as the HDD consumes 6.9 kilowatt. 
So storage percentage, storage power as percentage of the whole power for um, TLC plus HDD consumes 42% of the power, which is actually very consistent with the use cases that we found from Meta Recommendation Engine and Microsoft Azure. And QLC consumes only 13% of the total available power. So TGX plus NAS rack pair per 50 megawatt data center they can put 650 pairs if they go with TLC plus HDD, or they can go up to 950 racks uh, if they go for DGX H100 with all QLC. So in summary, if they use all QLC compared to the TLC plus HDD, they can have 4x fewer storage racks, 80% less storage power, and 50% more DGX plus NAS tracks. Yes. So uh, this is like the sizing the power consumption compared to what's the size or how the infrastructure capacity, right? Capacity, yes. So the power is consistent, 50 right. megawatt data center. So that's the max power they can have. Right. Assuming that that is the maximum supply power available to the data center. Right. And then to uh, provide the same performance as the HDD, we built another rack with all QLC. So yes, this is my question. Uh, is the performance of all QLC will be equivalent to TLCs? So uh, yes, so TLC is cache here. And okay. TLC, TLC is the cache. And when we are incorporating the, so basically how we model it, like uh, the duty cycle, which is the how long the drives has to be active when they want to offer the exact same performance as the HDD plus TLC. So TLC cache, so TLC is 10% of the total rack. So basically, how much JBoard HDD we have, TLC is only 10% uh, of that. Our QLC, we don't need any cache, so it's like uh, all the drives. And we put 16% of all the QLC as cache and 84% as object storage tier. And then we match the performance of the TLC. If you, if you look at our uh, TLC and QLC performance, they are very comparable, um, TLC versus QLC performance. So we don't see significant change in duty cycle as well as power consumption when we move from TLC and plus HDD to QLC. Okay, so if, if this is used for training uh, and these two setups are used, Performance will still not be completely at par, so you might end up taking more time on QLC systems and that might consume more power as well. So we converted that to the duty cycle. Okay. So as you mentioned, say the TLC is offering 100 megabyte per second and say QLC is offering 70, right. uh, for, for calculation purpose, say 80 megabyte per second. Okay. So if the TLC is active 20% of the time, QLC will be active, say, 25% of the time. Right. So how much power is consumed by the TLC, the QLC is consumed a little bit more power. But the, the major factor is when we are writing the data to HDD, object storage tier, then the write time for HDD will be much longer because their performance is much, much slower. We are getting benefit in terms of QLC because our write performance is like... Uh, 9x or 10x faster than the HDD. So in overall, overall we are better. consuming much less power. Got it. Yeah. Is this taking into account uh, storage networking power as well? Yes. Uh, those things are incorporated um, in both DGX server and also the QLC server. Okay. So yeah, so basically this is the summary of the previous slide. Um, DJX H100 plus um, TLC plus HDD rack or DJX H100 plus QLC, you can have a smaller design with the same performance and save more space in the data center. We also compared with all TLC versus all QLC. So basically DJX H100 plus all TLC versus DJX H100 plus all QLC. So we took SolidM 61 terabyte and compared with the 30 terabyte TLC that is available now in the market. And we, we see that we can still have like uh, around 10% more um, 
number of GGX pair if we go for QLC. Is it, is it only because number of drives are less for QLC? Is that the only reason? That is the major reason, yes. Okay. Um, for now, because 61 terabyte, but we are launching couple, couple. one, yes. We're launching 120 terabyte, 122 terabyte, and then the, the improvement will be even much more. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's the main factor is number of N drives. Number of drives, yes. Okay. But here's a question. So when you, when you go to the, the QLC versus your TLC, uh, is your heat patterns still manageable? Because will that not increase the, the, the amount of heat generated for the operations? So what we thought about is the, because heat is directly proportional to the uh, active power consumption. Mm -hmm. And our active power compared to the TLC is, uh, is comparable because our read and write varies, read power versus write powers. So when the heat is generated from the active power consumptions, we are taking into consideration because we are multiplying both with our data center PUE, which is incorporating the cooling cost. Yeah. So that is already incorporated here, the generation of the heat. Yeah, because because I would I would imagine the heat would decrease your your longevity. Yes, yes, that that, that is correct. Um, so to quantify exactly that amount is tough in the model, uh, but we do consider the degradation over time if it is uh, continuously generating heat. Yeah. Like that, yeah. yeah. I, th yeah. I think Thank one you. question I have is uh, training looks to me like it's it will have a lot of PNE cycles for, for the drive. So in that case, from longevity's perspective, TLC obviously would make more sense uh, because they have more P cycles compared to QLC. Right. So like what? But yeah, obviously power is a differentiator but definitely Th that's a really good question so ace is going to uh, show our solidum solution for different stage of uh, data pipeline and you will see uh, we have different solution for different stages and it will incorporate all uh, all those uh, training questions okay good so this is another use case example from ocean sorry um so Ocean used our solid M drive P5520 and uh, QLC P5430. And they started with the Hadoop plus Spark architecture. And they, they made um, this architecture much more efficient and energy efficient as well. So as you see here, their um, rack space was one third compared to Hadoop because Hadoop was like triple replication there was no, uh, they, they have 33% overhead, but no triple replication. And then the average power consumption for this architecture uh, was almost 6.5x lower compared to existing solution. And then uh, current annual energy spent is also almost 4x lower compared to current solution. And like Solidime, they also believe in high density drives which are helping them uh, in many ways, like no redundancy uh, for a, like HDD and also lower power consumption for all the drives. So what did they replace the redundancy with? Is it erasure code? Erasure coded, yes. 